Recently, we explored Emily Dickinson's envelope writings with 11th graders at Chelsea High School. The school is located in the city of Chelsea, a growing community of 5,000 people in southeastern Michigan. The students were introduced to artifacts from Dickinson's life and times, and a selection of her later writings from a time in her life when she gave up drafting, revising, and discarding drafts of poems upon their completion. Instead, working on envelopes and other scraps of paper, the students identified techniques Dickinson used in her envelope writings, including the shaping of objects, layout of words, collage, and the use of colors, textures, and peripheral spaces. Students were then asked to scavenge objects from their own lives, whatever they wanted, to repurpose to create envelope writings of their own. The students selected from a wide range of previously discarded objects from home and school, including scraps of paper, envelopes, shopping bags, cardboard boxes and tubes, plastic, fabric, advertisements, candy wrappers, and a host of other objects. Class time was then used to repurpose, reshape, and collage their finds in dialogue with writing that grew out of the process. Let's take a look at a selection of the object text that the students created. Selecting a Gerardelli chocolate wrapper, this student used a crease in the foiled paper to create a draft in columnar form on the right. We see love, sparkly, shiny, controls mood, craving, love, comforting, family, friends, eye-catching, addictive, bad for you, sweet, caramel, fun, chocolate, sweet. From this list, the student drafted the poem on the left shaping lines to conform with the edge of the torn paper. Addicting love. Something so bad for you, yet so addicting. It's often too hard to resist. But how can you live without it? Here, the bottom of a grocery bag was repurposed to become the surface for a poem about world hunger, and occasioned the curious introduction of a fly. A dark, loony world hunger night. When the light turns dark in the land of the free, the dark turns light around the world. Hunger strikes where the impoverished live, where while the privileged live, hunger is only a fly on their shoulder. One of the topics we discussed in class was the envelope as a metaphor for what surrounds, engulfs, overtakes, swallows up, beclouds, obscures, and perhaps even assumes the convenience of a pocket. This student disassembled a paper bag that once held chocolates and now quietly provided the avenue of a topic. They folded the bag to resemble a card waiting to be opened. The plastic wrapping was then carefully peeled back to resemble a chocolate, as if to protect the new treasure inside from the elements. A gift. The feeling, natural, memory that overcomes you when unspoken, received, a familiar scent of, which comfort is found, the sweet smell and happiness, the memory, remember so it won't be forgotten, the sweet sight, enough to warm a heart, a gift, a recognizable sound that goes unheard, unwrap a hidden gift. Around the time of spring in the year 1863, Dickinson added her poem, My First Well Day Since Many Ill, 
to fascicle 28, an excerpt of which reads, She dealt a fashion to the nut. She tied the hoods to seeds. She dropped bright scraps of tint about and left Brazilian threads. Like Dickinson, our students dealt a fashion to the nut and left us many bright scraps that document their journey to dialogue with objects that they could hold and smell and shape. Many imagined what it might have been like to be Emily Dickinson working on her little nuts and seeds, knowing perhaps, like her, that their fashioning had no higher purpose than play. In so doing, they felt free to associate and rhyme, to employ their own unconventional punctuation, and grow words in Congress with the refashioned and unexpected places they would inhabit. We learned that our students were best engaged with Dickinson when relating to her on their own terms, with scraps of tint always bounded by spaces that pressed each student to distill amazing sense from ordinary meanings. <laughs>